Hey everyone, it's Randy, uh, and today we're going to go over how to create a low uh, gravity effect in Unreal Engine 5. Now, already currently, uh, there is world gravity within the game, uh, and you can change it, and so you can get that low gravity effect. However, let's say you only want low gravity in a, a certain portion of the map, there's no current in, uh, in support for that, so you have to create it yourself. And it has to be through C++. Um, and it's really not that hard. I know C++ can sometimes be a little overwhelming and stuff, but you're going to have to create a project uh, with the C++ base, uh, and we'll just start off. So you're going to go to C++ classes. Go ahead, create a new C++ class. Uh, and we're going to create the base uh, parent, uh, a trigger box. So we have the trigger box next, and we're going to name it grab box. All right, put it under public. Go ahead, create class. It's going to take a second, and I have live coding on for some reason. Let me turn that off. If you have that on, bless your heart, turn it off. <laughs> uh, and it's going to give a second to compile. Uh, and now we have, um, we have a CVP file and a .h file. All right. So personally, how I like to set stuff up is I like to set up my CPP and my .h separately uh, and kind of split them up between each other. All right, so I've split the CPP and H file from my left and right side screen. That's, that's just personally how I like to do it. And I'm using the, uh, the writer IDE. And so let's go ahead and start in the .h file, okay? So uh, we are going to start by creating a new public section. There we go. And we're going to define a new U function. Um, and we're going to make it blueprint callable. Uh, and it's going to be return a void. It's, we're going to call it uh, gravity ticker. Okay. And let's set a U property. That's going to be edit anywhere. Blueprint read write. And we're going to set it to, or we don't need to set a category. You can if you want. Uh, for my purposes, for this, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and it's going to be of uh, actor pointer, T set. We're going to create a T set of actor pointers. Just call it actors as a local variable. So that's fine. All right. So we're going to create a, another, uh, another uh, property or another uh, variable. So I just copy and paste the U property thing there. Uh, and we're going to actually create our gravity now. So we have an F vector, which if you don't know Unreal Engine C++, that is just a vector. Um, they name it F vector, though that's their naming convention. So we're going to just initialize it to 0x, zero 0y, zero and 2,000 gravity. Um, and then if you don't like this, like when, you, when we implement it, you can always change it and you know mess around with however you want it to be. And so we're going to do uh, another U function, which is just a function. We're going to make it blueprint callable, which just means we can call it within our blueprint. Um, we're going to create a void um, on overlap. Overlap end. That's what we're going to call it. And it's going to take in a class of an actor pointer and just call it overlapped actor. And then we'll take in another class of a actor pointers. Uh, and this will be the other actor. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we, we need to create a protected virtual void uh, begin play. So this is just like what, what is called the, the Unreal Engine... Um, overhead will call this function because we're overriding it um and there we go so that's all we need to do in the dot h you know you can add any comments or change these variables or anything you want to do uh, and so now going over um to the grav.cpp uh, we can go ahead and create the definition for this function and we can also do it for this one and the begin play as well. Now, 
this is my own personal preference, but I usually like putting the begin play at the beginning, at the top. Uh, so we're going to do that there. And then this is in order. Uh, this, if you if you don't have the auto completion like I do in Rider here, you need to call a super begin play because this is being called down from the Unreal Engine overhead. Uh, and so we're going to start by uh, assigning an add dynamic. So we're going to on and on actor and overlap dot add dynamic this. Uh, and so what this is doing here right now is um, so there already is an on actor on actor and overlap. And so what we're doing is is when that's called, uh, we are assigning it to our on overlap end. Oh, I misnamed this. Uh, there we go. Okay, so that that's just a, a reassigning so that when that end overlap is called, um, that our the actor end overlap is called, our overlap end is also called, and we also want to set actor enable or tick enable uh, we're going to set it to true uh, that just means the tick is going to constantly be going uh, and then we're good there all right so now let's go down here uh, and going down here uh, so we created a t set of actors okay and so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna want to go through them constantly um, so what, what's going on here is the gravity ticker is going to be called by the tick function in the blueprint, and then it's going to run through the actors and apply the gravity effect to all of them. So we're going to create a for loop, uh, and, uh, the actors, and what we're going to want to check, um, now if you want the gravity to be different between characters and objects, what we could do here is we could check if other other is uh, oh I didn't capitalize it that's why if other is a uh, and then we're gonna call a character and you need to call static class that way it can check it and so this just checks is this a character all right and uh if it is a character what we're going to do is we're going to create a new character pointer based off of the um given other actor but we need to cast it that way we can apply certain functions so we're going to cast to a character because right now it's just an actor um, we're going to put in other, and now we have cast it, okay? All right, so now that we've cast the char actor, uh, we're going to go ahead and call the char actor. That is now a character. We're going to dereference the pointer, and we're going to get the character movement component, uh, and we want to call add impulse on it. And then you're going to place in the gravity, because you're going to, because add impulse uh, changes the direction, or it adds an impulse of a physics effect uh, via a vector. And so we're placing in that vector gravity, and we're good to go on that end. Uh, the only, th only other thing you need to do is just add an else statement to this. All right, so now uh, we're going to we're going to cast the other again, but we're going to cast it to a U primitive component. And again, this is uh, this is so we can call um, the add impulse on it. But we need to get the root component. So this is like a non-character that we're messing with right now, but we still want it to be affected to it. So like if you wanted an, a regular object to also see the gravity effect. Um, and so we're going to add the impulse, and we're going to place in gravity. And there we go. So again, what this is doing... You have a T set of actors, pointer actors, and the gravity ticker is being called every every frame. And this is running through the set. And if it's a character, it's adding an impulse of gravity of an upward vector. And if it's uh, a not if it's not a character, it's still adding that impulse upward. Um, and this is counteracting the current gravity the character is facing.
or is the character's uh, feeling from gravity. So now on overlap n, what we need to do is we need to check. Uh, we need to check if actors contains the other actor. Uh, so what this is, what we're going to be doing is checking if it's in there, and then we're going to be removing it. Actors dot remove uh, other actor. Okay. Um, so what? Wh why? The only reason we're doing this is it's just a nice, convenient way to run this and check it. All right. Uh, so now uh, we can go ahead and compile our code. Um, there we go. Compile. All right. So the code now is completely compiled. Uh, we didn't get any errors, and we're good to move on here. All right. So go into content drawer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just place this anywhere. We're going to create a new blueprint, and we're going to find our grav box. That's going to be the base. And so BP uh, grav box trigger. Okay. So go ahead and open this up. Uh, wrong window. There we go. Uh, and so what this is, is we ha now have a gravity trigger box. And it, right here, you can change how big it is um, and how what you want with it. But we can see here, we can see the gravity, and so we can change that effect of it. So we're going to go into the event graph, and we need to, on event begin play, um, uh, we, actually we can go ahead and delete that, uh, but on the event tick, we need to call gravity ticker. Remember I said it was going to be taken every second. So if you uh, actually look in the tick here, you can set the tick interval. Uh, if it's zero or less than zero, it's going to be ticking every frame. Otherwise that you specify it just as it says there and tick is enabled. Uh, and so we're good to go on that end. All right. So we have the actor begin overlap. And this is where the more complicated uh, blueprinting is going to be. It's, it's really not that hard, but it's, the most complicated in this video uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just call a branch first and so we need to check something when this uh, actor is overlapped we need to check when it's overlapped is it already in the um, in the uh, the T set of actors so we're going to um, all we're gonna actually call the show inherited variables got variables grab box we're gonna grab this and then we're gonna check contains pass in this actor and then we're gonna just not it not boolean and we're gonna call an and statement and pass that into the branch now what we're also gonna check here is another item so on items you can set them to movable or non-movable so we need to check that this item is actually movable so we need to get the root component root component all right so we got the root component and now we're going to call the get mobility so this is the enum and that keeps track of that and we're going to see what it is equal to and we want to make sure it is equal to movable because it has to be in order for this to work correctly so uh, otherwise if it's not movable uh you'll get a bunch of like errors and warnings that says like hey this is not movable so now we can go ahead and copy this the the actor i'm gonna go ahead and turn this a little bit and we can and we can go ahead and add to the set the actor there we go and go ahead and set it to true so what this does is it checks if the actor is already in there flips it uh, and does an and statement checks if it's set to a movable mobility and then if both of those are true uh, then we add it to the set all right and that is all we need to do in this blueprint so now we can go here drag this blueprint in here uh, and let's see, we can scale it up. 
Well, you could probably actually just like change the size of the box, but uh, that's not what I feel like doing. So I'll go ahead and just create big, big box. All right, so let's go ahead and play test. Uh, now, if you'll see, I changed our gravity number though from 2,800. Uh, and this is because if you put in 2,000, it's too strong and you will shoot to the moon and not come back home. So if we kind of see through here, you kind of, you can walk through it completely normally. Um, but then as soon as you start like jumping, you get this like little, little low gravity effect. Um, and so now what we could do is if that's too much for you, we can lower it even more, 600. And just keep play testing with it. You can move around, change the box as much as you want. Oh, see, so like that, that's good. That's a good, nice little low gravity effect. Um, now let's see if we can get a box to do some low gravity. Okay, so I figured something out here. So if you want the, the boxes to actually work, uh, do not forget, if, if you want any object to actually work with this, it needs to have overlap on. So if you click on an object, just search up overlap, you need to have generate overlap on for these boxes. Uh, I'd also recommend turning on uh, mass uh, for these objects. That way you can manipulate how much they are affected. Uh, so what we can see here is that if we go in, we pick up the gun, we shoot it it just flies right through it and it treats it like a low gravity just like that and we can jump through it too kind of like that and yeah it's pretty awesome now you might get some warnings uh when you walk through this with like the basic setup with a gun it might say like it's not simulating physics um and the the way around that is just turn on the simulating physics for any object that's going to go through it that's going to be um possibly running through it um, if you have overlap off, you don't need to worry about that. So, otherwise that, uh, that's all I got for you guys. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, uh, put them in the comments below, like, you know. And, uh, let me know if you guys want to see more C++, uh, based stuff. I, I do a lot of that in my free time. So, take care everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.